All right, use batch apex. So, what is a batch apex? Batch apex is used to run large jobs. Now, think of thousands or millions of records that would exceed normal processing limits, right? Now, using batch apex, you can process records asynchronously in batches. Hence the name batch apex, to stay within platform limits. If you have a lot of records to process, for example, data cleansing or archiving, batch apex is probably your best solution. See, here is how batch apex works under the hood. Jimmy, you're just reading the whole thing. You're, you're just reading the whole thing. I know, this is a bit abstract. <laughs> I wanna take my time so that you understand how or when to process or use batch apex. So I want to read the whole thing, okay? So here is how batch apex works under the hood. Let's say you want to process 1 million records using batch apex. So think about 1 million records. Probably you're working for a you know, state or province, and you want to process um, data of the citizens of that province or city or whatever. Now, the execution logic of the batch class is called once, okay? The execution logic, the execution logic of the batch class is called once for each batch of records you are processing. So, once for each batch, okay? Each time you invoke a batch class, the job is placed on the Apex job queue and is executed as a discrete transaction. This functionality has two awesome advantage. So, every transaction starts with a new set of governor limits, making it easier to ensure that your code stays within the governor execution limits. So using batch is one of the main reason you want to use a batch is because you want to overcome this governor execution limits because if you're using a regular process, that is not batch, you will hit a limit, either it's Apex CPU time limit, because your entire process, it can only run within 60 seconds, or a sockle, too many sockle, or too many DML, whatever. You can't possibly process 1 million records without using a batch, because you will hit a governor limit, whatever that is. You can't possibly run a complicated update for 1 million records um, even if you bulkify it within 60 seconds unless it's a super simple update right so that's why batch comes in handy so how does a batch work so first there's a start and then there is execute and there is finish so what is this so it's it's three phase process. First, start. Basically, tell the batch or tell, tell the batch what to process. I have an illustration here. For example, we are a marble shop and I'm telling a batch, I want to put all the 10 cents marbles into jars and sell them for $10 each. Look at that. 10 cents become $10 each. That's how you do business, right? Make money. So this is the start process. The start, define what you want to process. So I say my start process is get all this marble that costs 10 cents. All marbles that cost 10 cents is my start. 
So you have a whole huge bucket of all marbles that cost 10 cents each. That is my start. All marbles that cost 10 cents. That's my start. We have a bunch of those. So start is all marbles that's, that cost 10 cents. Okay. And then execute. What do we want to do with those 10 cent marbles? What I'm telling the batch is on the execute, put those 10 cents marbles on a jar, in a jar. Just fill it up. Just fill up the jar, however it fill. And you package it into a package of four jars. Four jars. And I'm going to sell it for 40 bucks for four jars. Four short jars of marbles. So this is the execute process. The start process, get all the marbles that cost 10 cents, everybody, everything. How many millions you have in, in the bucket there, okay? How many marbles you have, put it, this is my start, and then on execute, put those into four jars, one, two, three, four, and sell these four jars, 40 bucks and I'm going to make a lot of money. <laughs> that's how you do business. So that's my execute process. What about the finish? Finish is just basically what you want to do. Once this whole thing is all jarred up, packaged into four jars and sold as $40 a package, which is four jars. When this bucket is empty and it's all put into these packages, well, tell me. Tell me if it's done. This is empty. I'll put inside a jar. Tell me when it's done. So you tell, tell me when it's done. Okay, batch. So you put that in the finish process. So basically, this is the skeleton of how the batch works. First, start here. Okay, start, tell the batch what do you want to process. All the marbles that cost 10 cents. This is my start criteria to collect the batches of records, which is my marbles here. Okay. Once you got that, you execute that. Execute and put your code here, which is going to be put those marbles into jars of four. Jars of four. So four jars. And I want to sell those four jars for $40. So you can't just buy one jar, you have to buy four jars. I want to make lots of money, okay? Four jars, $40. No questions asked. <laughs> and then you can play with your marbles. Okay, so once you're finished putting those marbles into the jars, tell me so I can start selling. Okay, tell me, email me or text me or whatever. So that's how you construct a batch. So global class, name the batch, implements, database batchable and then it contains as object and then you do database query locator iterable and you just follow this shell and just you know pass parameters into it so we're going to start coding on here and we have an example here okay this is how you invoke a batch class so my batch class which is this whatever you define here the class name in the, your your class your variable name new my batch class and then you have an id my, my batch id and then you just execute it database execute batch and then my batch object which is this variable name and it's going to start running so it's 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 going to be abstract but we are going to try it out on our challenge okay so this is how you define how many how many jobs you want to do a batch? This is, by default, it's going to be 200, 200 records, right? But you can define it one only, a batch, two, 100. You can define it however you want, okay? And here, if you want to check the, the status of the job, you can do, do so by here. But you can also check it from your apex job um, list on your on your on your salesforce org we're going to check that as well on the challenge now also 
using state in batch apex so by default batch apex is stateless stateless means um, you know what state stateless means right so you if you put a variable here it's got it's not gonna track it so you can it, it's not gonna track it what it's gonna do is it's just gonna process the records and that's it but if you say database is stateful please track my variables I want to know when the thing is done or how many process how many records are already processed you so, so you can define the global integer of the records process the variable name it's zero then you pass you do the, your circle here you define your circle here what you want to process in this case um, accounts in in the USA right and then and then you you execute it so once you execute that you want to make sure the contact address is matched with the account address and you assign that and then you do an update outside of the loop for bulkifying it but then you want to track the records process so without stating that database is stateful you can't do this this will not be tracked okay you can't do this kind of processing unless you define database dot state full because you want to track variables inside this whole this whole batch class here okay that's what stateful is for so the code should be fairly straightforward but can be a little abstract that's right in reality so here is what's going on in more detail well, I've explained about it, okay? The start, the execute, and the finish through the marble example. I've explained that. Now, testing it is pretty straightforward. All you do is you have to create a test record first, create a bunch of accounts and contacts, and basically, you just execute the batch here. And it's gonna run between the test start test and test stop test, and then you can assert equality. Well, that's pretty much it. So we are going to actually practice. Please read these best practices as well. But we are going to practice um, hands-on coding on the challenge, which is going to be on the next video. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to probably create, um, I don't know, we'll see, uh, a bunch of fake leads, not just 200. Or I'm going to reduce the batch uh, processing from 200 records at a time to maybe one record at a time. So you can actually see when the batch is processing. Otherwise, it's just gonna be done in a second. So what can you see? It's done, right? So I'll see you on the next video on our hands on challenge. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce App Exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video, and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.